Look at this, you guys. Uh, out of curiosity, I finally cracked open that tiny little egg. And uh, it's just a little bit of egg white. Oh, there's a little bit of in the white here. It's a tiny little dabble of yolk I didn't even see. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hi, guys. I uh, have welcoming you to my lounge room, my whatever, the one I don't know what to call it because we have the bar and the hunting stuff and the elliptical and stuff. Um, it is, what time is it? I don't know. I got my viewfinder on my watch, but it is like 11, 1130 ish at night. And I just got home from work and I still need to do my second 75 hard workout of the day. Um, so what I wanted to do was show you not the entire workout, but what I do for my go-to workout, which is what I am using for my 75 hard workout, one of them every day, at least. I always do my outdoor workout first because then I get it out of the way and I'm not doing an outdoor workout at the night if I have to do it at nighttime. So I'm realizing that the background's really busy in here and I don't have like a better place to actually do it, but it is what it is. It's really cold out here. We don't heat it unless we have people coming over or something, which is fine with me because I'll be on the elliptical and I don't want to be hot when I'm on there. But before we do that, I know this video is going to be kind of crazy all over the place. I want to show you um, a gift that Bakehouse Co. got from my older brother, which is really exciting. I had forgotten that he used to be into cake decorating and I don't know that he still does it anymore, but he sent me a couple packages from Amazon. So I want to show you what they are. I actually have already opened them. So I already know what they are. So it's not really a true unboxing, but I wanted to show you that stuff. The first thing I got is actually really, really freaking cool. Um, he had sent me a text and I kind of wondered if he wasn't up to something, but uh, asked me if I had any um, decorating tips or needed any. And he actually started out with asking about the other thing that I got, but yeah, so anyway, I told him I had some cheap ones. I think they're just some cheap Korean ones, but he sent me this. It's a set of Wilton decorating tips. I haven't even opened it yet because I wanted to wait to show you guys, but look at all the fun tips that are on there. And then there's a carrying case. And unfortunately, I'll cover the info. I think Amazon put, just slapped the package right on here and sent it. So I guess Amazon did that. We thought it came from Amazon. Maybe it came from him directly. At any rate, I can't see the instructions, but I think I can figure it out. So I wanted to open this up with you guys. Oh man, okay, that box barely made it. And I'll save this card. Oh, the box is broken. That makes me mad. Whatever, it'll still work. I just don't like when people give me stuff and it's broken before I even get to have it. it. Makes me sad for their purchase and for me. But this is cool because, wow, these are really cool tips. Um, but it's got a holder and I can put a bunch more of my tips in here. And look, here's all those writing tips like I was talking about the other day. Oh yes, some extra big tips. My favorite, a 2B. I'm sorry, it's a D, what am I talking about? And then this one is, oh, look at that. It's a 366 and there's a flower nail in here. Um, and an extra coupler, which is awesome. And that's a broken piece of the lid. Oh, I'm so frustrated about that, you guys. But it is what it is. Cool, well, it still closes. Oh. Oh yeah, it does still close. Okay, good enough. It's good enough. And I'm really excited because I've been wanting some storage for my tips. Okay, so that's cool, but check this out. I'm gonna show you all the trinkety stuff that came with it first. But look, here's a serving device offset spatula. Ooh, this one's even better than the one I have, a bigger offset spatula. So that's awesome. That's awesome because they're not rubber, they're plastic. That'll be very handy. You know, rubber scrapers are good for things too, but the plastic ones are what I'm, where I'm at, yeah. Mr. Ruger over there, I have that, I don't have it. My dude put the wood duck down on the coffee table, um, which has a deer hide on it, antlers, and then the wood duck, and 
Mr. Nosy over here. I can't leave it alone. This is another thing I'm super stoked about. So my sister got me a set of little ones, but these are big ones. They're a cake, like smoothers and fondant tools. And look, <laughs> sorry, I had to check on my dog. So yeah, cool designs are coming. And then here's the cool thing. <sighs> a cake stand turntable, which I can already feel just doing this. It is so much better than the cheap plastic one I have because the cheap plastic one I have doesn't have very good ball bearings. So it just is really rickety and you can see it in the icing work. Um, it's nice and heavy, it's aluminum. And this pink color is, oh, that's cool. It's got like a nice silicone bottom. Sorry, dog hair is everywhere already. But the pink color is awesome because it's like fits the whole bakery thing. Like the mixer I have is that like 50s mint green that I love. And then like this pink. So I love it. It's very cool. So thank you, big brother. So I've done this workout routine for so long that I just keep like a little um, list of it on my elliptical. <laughs> but I about have it memorized. I hope that I have this on a level where you can see it all, but what I'm going to do is I'll film it straight on and from the side, and then I'll split screen it for you so you guys can see the whole deal. But I hate that the background is so busy. I'm so sorry. So I would do five minutes on the elliptical. I'd probably do 10 on the first go to warm up. And then each set, the whole deal, takes me probably, I'd say eight minutes, so for the 45 minute workout, I'll do six sets to get to 48 minutes. So what I would do is I would warm up on the elliptical five minutes. And before I don't even give myself a chance to catch my breath, I might take a sip of water. I jump right down here to the kettlebells. I have two kettlebells set out, a 35 pound and a 10 pound. We actually also own a five pound kettlebell, but I don't use that for this workout. So then the first thing I do, is kettlebell squats and I'm gonna do five reps of each of these things. Okay, so this might be an awkward angle but I had to drop you down so that you can see my feet and everything I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I do is I take my 35 pound kettlebell and I'm gonna do five squats and I'll just do goblet squats and what I do is I get a good, you know, hips width, toes facing forward, knees over toes alignment um, and I just squat down, pick it up, Rest it on my chest, kind of. Don't let it take the weight off. And then we're just gonna do five squats. One, two, three, and as I'm doing that, I am dropping as low as my knees will let me because I do have bad knees. I'm working on that, strengthening them. That's where the yoga's coming in and this conditioning will help. And then I am, you know, squeezing from my pelvic floor and my buttocks to get myself back up. Okay, I'm trying to remember the principles that I learned while I was powerlifting. So keep a neutral spine, don't tip forward, don't arch back. And there you have it. And I don't have perfect form, but I have pretty decent form, I believe. Um, and this is also gonna help me kind of assess my form. Now I'm gonna do five deadlifts. And to do those deadlifts, I will have the same stance. My feet, you cannot see my feet themselves, but my feet are hips width apart, toes facing forward, neutral. And then we're gonna come over, we're gonna bend over, without bending our knees, pick up the kettlebell, keep the spine straight this way, and stand straight up. One, squeeze the buttocks. Two. See, I'm shrugging my shoulders. It's just a little thing I land on heavy. On heavy deadlift, it helps your shoulders. I don't know if that's bad form, bad habit, good form, good habit, I don't know. I do it. It's 35 pounds, it's not gonna injure me, unless I get ridiculous. Something I don't know if you can see or not is that I am 
letting the dead bolt, the dead bolt, letting the kettlebell hit the ground and share the kinetic energy with the ground because that's what we're doing, we're lifting dead weight. If we go a little bit, just touch and stand back up, we are not um, doing ourselves any kind of services. We are, it's an injustice to our workout. We learned, which I didn't do, when you're lifting really heavy, to tilt your head back like this because it relieves really pressure on your spine. I should have been doing that. Real quick, we're gonna break from the 35 pound kettlebell. We're gonna move on to the 10 pound kettlebell. I do not know what these are called. Um, I used to just draw like a weird picture in my notebook when I was going to the gym of them. I should have been back here the whole time, sorry. So for this exercise, what we do is, I'm going to show you, actually on this side, my left front facing, my right side facing, so I can even it out. Uh, the best way I can explain it is just to show you what we're doing. So, we're doing Whoops, I did that one slow so that you could see it, but we really just go fast. Turns out, I'm feeling like I could probably do these heavier, but I don't have a heavier weight. I started talking to you and I know that's gonna be the non-talking side of the footage, but I was calling those kettlebell crossovers. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, I'll bet, see if I can find the name of the guy that was on the Joe Rogan podcast that talks about kettlebell workouts. That's where we learned that move from my brother and I. That's a kettlebell swing. And I'll describe it to you quick. We're gonna have the same stance, always hips facing forward, knees over toes. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up the kettlebell and we're going to swing, but we're not going with the momentum of the swing. We are doing the work, so it's a little bit deceiving. So let me show you. Oh, I lied. This is a wide stance thing. So we're going to go a wide stance. So I'll have to track our knees over our toes. If you need to turn your heels in a little bit, do so because you need to do what's safest for your body. Okay, you see how my toes are still in line with my hip, point it out like that. My knees will track over my toes. We don't have a big squat to this. It's okay, ready? So we're gonna go it's one. And it's more like it's more like a squatting motion, abs activated. So something like that you need to make sure you're using a weight you can handle because you can easily send it flying and that can become dangerous. Let me catch my breath. This is actually the last standing exercise. So you need to be careful. Um, this one and the next one I'm going to show you could potentially be dangerous. So again, use a weight you can handle. I wish I had dumbbells still so I could show you dumbbell variations on, variations on all of this, but I don't have them. So this is an overhead press. The max I can overhead press ever has been 65 pounds with a barbell. So I'm confident in using a 35 pound kettlebell. Poor Ruger is having some behavioral issues. He had a really um, intense, not rough, but intense past couple of days of training and he's starting to act out. Huh, bud. Okay, so we're gonna do our overhead press. So, ow. While I'm stretching out that mystery pain, I remembered what I was going to tell you. You might see me um, pronate a little bit uh, to compensate because I do have a large gut and I have to move my legs and body around to get through that because um, a lot of people don't realize that actually hinders your flexibility. I have more flexibility than you would think, but um, the gut gets in the way. So sometimes I have to stick my knees out to go down and roll them back in. So not good form, but it's my only option. So, okay. Now I must have not have warmed up properly because the inner part of my hamstring is really sore right here. Uh, but it's a good thing we're done with legs. But I might just not finish legs today 
uh, and just run it out and do extra upper body. And then put a lot of heat on that before I go to bed because I don't want to have the actual injury and not be able to work out in the future. Obviously I was using some poor form at some point where it's too cold or I'm not warm. My body's not warmed up enough, but we're going to do overhead presses now. So I take it here and then we're just going to go straight up. I have to make sure I'm not going to hit the sand later. And we're going to go one. Okay, so you'll see I'm kind of bringing my arms back and jutting my chin forward and that was actually a kind of ingrained movement from having the barbell there. Uh, so you don't like hit your chin. I actually, I, I was taught to do it that way, so I actually don't know why, but it's stuck in my body to do it that way. And what I'm doing when I made this kettlebell routine was um, trying to hit all the points um, that we would hit in the gym in the course of a week because it's lighter weight. Um, because I actually made that uh, last almost a year ago now. We got snowed in uh, for almost a week. We had record snowfall here and I was missing the gym and I needed to work out every day. So that's how I did it. We're gonna do a kettlebell bench prep. So we're going to the floor for the last two things. Lay down, good boy. <clears throat> we have a helper, but it's okay. I don't think he's gonna block anything. Again, be very careful. Use the weight you can use. If you can only lift, lift five or 10 pounds, use that. Uh, they call these skull crushers because um, you'll see. And I think this one, I'm just gonna do this way. You don't need to see me from two directions on this one. What I do, I do it at an incline. So do a bridge. Um, buttocks tucked, and we're gonna, I always roll the weight up onto my chest, okay? And we're gonna use proper bench press form. So we're gonna bench straight up. So, incline. See, I'm dropping. That is how I do my bench presses. I am working on form. Uh, it's kind of hard to figure out with a kettlebell, but that is what I have learned. I can feel it in my pecs the same way I can feel a, a standard bench press. So the last thing I think I'll just show you at an angle because there's not too much to it either. Or a seated Russian twist. So um, I will move my upper body this way and my lower body that way. And I'll hold the kettlebell close to my chest and I'll do one and two and for five. So here we go. Centered. And that's that. And that gets all of your abs obliques all the way down. Uh, so that's that. That is my kettlebell workout. I'm not a certified personal trainer by any means. This is literally a workout that I have built, like I said, just to kind of compensate for what I was missing when I was going to the gym. I can't afford to go to the gym right now. We have a, what do you call it? What is it called? A bow flex. I wish you could see how cute he's being right now. Um, we have a bow flex out in the garage, but I don't know how to use it. So I haven't been. So like I said, I do six sets of this, that whole workout. Five minutes on the elliptical, all the way down. And then once I get done with the last one, I give myself a little breather, like 30 seconds to a minute. Catch my breath. Starting your workout. No. Catch my breath. Starting your workout. No. Catch my breath, drink some water, keep going. So that's that. I hope that you don't mind the weirdness of the video because wasn't that interesting about the egg? It was like a drop of yolk. There wasn't even enough. I didn't even think anything was going to come out of there. The air pocket was more than half the volume of the inside of the egg. So, uh, yeah. Interesting. So that's like, welcome to Stay Host World. But that's my workout. I do that once a day or try to. Um, if I don't do that, I, 
actually haven't been not doing that one. The outdoor one's the one that varies more. But uh, yeah, that's that. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, they can't see me if you sit in front of me. <laughs>